watching this free video tutorial which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Corona 4 Cinema 4D. It is a massive 8 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Corona 4 Cinema 4D thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. In this lesson we talk about the basics of interior lighting in Corona 4 Cinema 4D. For this, we will be using this interior scene, which you can download it from Chaos Group website after logging in in the resources section under free 3ds Max scenes. I have just adjusted the scene a bit to make it more usable for this particular lesson. We have only this one opening, which is this sliding door that leads to the balcony. We have some simple furniture and that's it. For uh, lighting an interior scene, you would normally use a simple Corona Sun and Sky, but you can also use an HDRI map if you are looking for a certain color cast in your interiors. We will be learning both in this lesson. We have this default Corona material applied to all the geometries in the scene. So it's going to be a simple clay render, but it's going to help us to understand how the lighting works in Corona much easier. First, we need a Corona Sun and Sky, so let's add a Corona Sun and a Corona Sky. Now run the interactive rendering. And now we can adjust our Sun's position. Probably set the rotation of the Sun to 192 degrees and the angle to 32 degrees so the sunlight can come in. Depending on how you want the sunlight to shine in, you can adjust the rotation and the angle values. Next, we need to adjust the exposure and highlight compression to probably something like uh, one and uh, something like seven. So you can clearly see the direction of the sunlight. And here is our beautiful interior lighting without doing much really. As we talked about in the global illumination lesson, when lighting an interior scene, the secondary GI solver should be always UHD cache. So make sure it's on UHD cache. And uh, let's quickly discuss Corona portal material. In 3D rendering, there is something called portals or portal lights. It's a very old concept and it's about to go extinct as the render engines are getting more intelligent. But what they do for interior lighting is that you place a portal on every opening in the uh, room, normally a window or a door if it's open. And that portal tells the lighting to focus its sampling inside the room. And this way we get cleaner render faster. In Corona, uh, we use portals if the openings are relatively small. If you have small windows in your scene, using portals can give you much cleaner renders way faster. In this particular scene, we have this huge opening, so probably using portals wouldn't be that important. But we see how to use portals in Corona anyways and test if using portals can benefit us in this particular scene or not. The way to add portals in Corona is to cap that opening with one simple plane and then apply a Corona portal material to the plane or plane-like geometry and that's it. If I go to the perspective view and take a look at the scene from the balcony, you should place your portals in a way that there wouldn't be any geometries behind it. In this scene, we should probably put it right in front of the balcony in here. For most scenes, when there is no geometry behind the windows, you would place your portals so they would cap the windows. In this scene, let's cap this balcony opening with a simple plane like geometry. So I'm going to press M then E to enable the polygon pen tool and make sure 3D snapping is enabled. Now we can going to cap this opening and rename the geometry to something like portal. Now to make it an actual portal, we need to assign a Corona portal material to it. So create a new portal material and assign it to the portal geometry. And that's it. Now we have a portal to assist with the lighting. 
I want to test to see if in this scene using a portal can actually be beneficial. So let's get back to our camera view and I'm going to have a render without the portal and set a one minute limit on our render. So let's make sure our portal geometry is hidden so it wouldn't affect the lighting for this first render. And in the render settings under the scene tab uh, or the general settings tab, I set a one minute limit for the render and make sure there is no denoising because we want to see the actual unadulterated render. So let's hit render. So this is our first render without any portals. I'm going to store it in the history tab of the Corona frame buffer and rename it to no portals. Now we can make the portal geometry visible and render the scene again. Store this one as well and let's name it with portals. Now set the first render as the A side by left clicking on it and the second one as B by right clicking on it. If we compare the two, the left side is the one without any portals and the right side is the one with portals enabled. Uh, I can't see any noticeable difference. Maybe on top of the bed or on the floor we see slightly cleaner renders but nothing too much. So in this case, we probably don't need any portals, but let's keep it anyways. Even that slight improvement is appreciated. The next thing would be to put a skyline or a landscape image behind the windows as a background so it wouldn't be just a simple white color from the Corona sky. For this, we are going to be using Corona light material. Uh, I have this hidden plane right behind the building and we want to apply our landscape image to this. So I'm going to add a Corona light material and use this img0115.jpg image, which is a free backplate from hdrihaven.com as the emission texture and make sure to turn off emits light because we don't want it to contribute anything to the lighting. We just want it to be self illuminated. Now assign the Corona light material to the backplate plane. and change the display mode to quick shading in the viewport so we can actually see the image. Probably set the tiling to negative one on V and offset V to around 20% on the texture tag and run the interactive rendering. To make sure that the image matches with the lighting, we can increase the intensity of the light material to around 4. And that's it. For the final render, we just need to enable full denoising or high quality denoising and make sure there is no time limit for our render and set the resolution to something like 1400s by uh, 1190 and render the scene for a few minutes. <clears throat> now I'm going to stop the render as I've already rendered the scene for 64 passes and saved out as a CXR file. So I'm going to open it up in the Corona image editor. We can probably increase the contrast to something like 2.5. Filmic shadows 2.5, only uh, 0.5. And we can obviously control our denoising as we wish. And you can see we get this beautiful render. Now you can save out a JPEG or a PNG version of your render to the disk from the save button. Now what I want to do now is to use an HDRI image instead of the Corona Sun and Sky. So I'm gonna save out this version of the scene first. Okay, first uh, let me select the Corona Sun and uh, turn it off and hide our backplate geometry and also uh, hide the uh, Corona Sky. Now we have no light in the scene. 
I'm gonna create a corona, new Corona Light material and load this. Uh, the sky is on fire HDRI from HDRIHeaven.com as the emission texture. To be able to control its exposure independently, as we learned previously, we can open up the node material editor and uh, we need to connect the map to a Corona color correct node and use the color correct node as the emission texture. Now let's create a new Cinema 4D sky and assign the new light material. In the render settings, we can uh, probably decrease the resolution to something like 800 by 600 to get faster feedbacks and run the interactive rendering. And now we get this gorgeous lighting because we have that beautiful sunset HDRI in our environment. I'm gonna rotate the sky object and based on the angle you get different lighting and moods. And obviously you can try other HDRIs as well. Probably something like uh, 60 degrees would be nice. I'm gonna increase the exposure to uh, three and make sure highlight compression is about 2.5 as well. And now let's see what we get. Now this by itself is a very gorgeous render, but if you want, you can obviously add the Corona Sun to the current render and try to decrease the intensity so it's a bit more matched with the lighting and make its size a bit bigger to produce diffuser shadows and probably use a Kelvin value like uh, 3000 degrees for the sun so it matches with the tonality of the HDRI in the environment. For now, let's enable our background geometry, which was called backplate plane. Uh, create a new light material and load this bitmap from HDRI Heaven, which is actually one of the backplate images for the sky. The sky is on fire HDRI that we worked with previously as the emission texture. All the HDRIs actually on HDRI Haven are free, so it's an amazing website, hdrihaven.com. Now make sure the light material doesn't emit any light and run the interactive rendering for now. You can obviously adjust the offset and the tiling for the image using the texture tag, but it's really up to you. I think uh, the current settings would probably work just fine. Now we can increase the resolution to something like 1400. Uh, by 1190 and start the final render. I've already rendered the scene, so let's open up the CXR version of the render. So here is our render with the noising applied. I'm going to increase the contrast to 3 and filmic shadows to something like 0.5. Contrast could be 2, 3, and depending on what you like. And filmic shadows to something like 0.5. Very beautiful and moody render. Great. In this lesson, we learned about interior lighting in Corona. See you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching this free video tutorial which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Corona for Cinema 4D. It is a massive 8 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Corona for Cinema 4D thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out.